Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. John's Presbyterian Church here in Toronto. Uh, we're thrilled to have some of us here in person, and we have a couple of people online with us. For uh, It's uh, August 14th, 2022, and for anybody who might be watching online later and doesn't know who I am, I'm the Reverend Maureen Walter, the minister of the church and we are very pleased and delighted to have with us this morning Sharon Beckstedt, who is uh, playing our organ for us and leading us in music. And thank you very much for being here. For thousands of years, this land has been the traditional home of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. It's still home to indigenous people from across Turtle Island. We're grateful to work, live and worship on this land. This is the day which the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God together. Our hymn is number 115, 115. We have uh, been singing the first, second, and fifth verses of most hymns, uh, so we'll do that with 115. Hail to the Lord's anointed. Thank you. 
Let us join together in prayer. God, our Father, your love is at work in all that you have made. And we know that in your likeness, we are made new. Holy Spirit, you touch our lives with hope. Receive our worship this day. Claim us for your service. Set us free to honor you. But God of life, we also ask that you would grant us your forgiveness. We confess that we have not always lived up to the ideals we have in our hearts of serving you and of loving one another and of living in your community to further the work of the kingdom of heaven. There are times when we have been heedless in our thoughts, cruel in our words, shameful in our actions. There are times when we have been indifferent to a world made sad by want and wastefulness, and where we have passed by on the other side when we see our neighbor in need. We have wandered from the way that leads to peace into paths of our own pleasing. For all these things and for everything for which we carry a burden of guilt, we ask that you would grant us your forgiveness that you would help us to atone, to move forward, to do better. And that wherever we cannot heal what has gone wrong, that we would pray for your healing, your light, and your love. You create us, O oh Lord, and you have redeemed us. And we pray that you would banish any thought or deeds of darkness from our lives, Help us to know and believe that we are your children of love and that we are free through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, 
to begin again. Amen. And be assured that in the mercy and love of God, we are a forgiven people. And this day is a new day and a fresh start for each one of us. Amen. We're going to read responsively from the Psalm book, Psalm 82. Psalm 82. God is seated in the divine council and in the midst of the gods holds judgment. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk around in darkness. I say, you are gods, children of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Julie Gangadine, one of our session members, is going to read our scriptures to us. Good morning. Today's scripture is from Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 23 to 29. And it can be found on page 817 in your pew Bibles. Am I only a God? Nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away. Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do not, do not I fill heaven and earth? Have I heard? I have heard what the prophecy, prophets say who prophesies lies in my name. They say, I had a dream, I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesize the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell one another will make my people forget my name just as their ancestors forgot my name through Baal worship. Let the prophet who has a dream recount the dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord. And like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. The second reading is from Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 59, and it can be found on page 1090 in your Pew Bibles. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. 
Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but the vision. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, Immediately, you say, it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south winds blow, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrisies, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is that it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Why don't you judge for yourself what is right as you are going with your adversary to the magistrate? Try hard to be reconciled on the way or your adversary may drag you off to the judge and the judge turn you over to the officer and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. The word of the Lord. We're going to sing hymn number 434 for the beauty of the earth. And I think this is another one where we'll be doing the first, the second, and the last verses. Yes. One, two, and five. Um. Let us join together in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Amen.
Midway through Jesus' public ministry, he tells the disciples that they are seeing what prophets and kings hoped for. A new heaven and a new earth have come into being. A new way of life is needed, and Jesus begins to teach them how to live it. As we read his teachings in Luke's gospel, Jesus tells his disciples that he has come to light a fire on earth and to baptize with a new baptism. He's eager to see his ministry lived out. How I wish it were already kindled, he exclaims, adding, what stress I am under until it meaning his baptism, is completed. He says this ministry is not about bringing peace. In fact, he expects it will generate conflict, especially within families. Family members will be divided from one another. And we know the truth of this. We have all seen families divided over ideas of God, religion and politics, and what is right and wrong. There's no doubt in Jesus' mind that his disciples are able to decide between right and wrong. It concerns him that they do not always do so, but allow themselves to become distracted. He tells them they can see as well as he can that a new way of life is needed. They have seen and heard the things of this world and they have seen Jesus' ministry of teaching and healing take effect. If only they were as aware of these events as their meaning as there are about the clouds in the sky and the wind. When the clouds flow in from the form in the west, the disciples know it's time to prepare for rain. When the wind blows from the south, they get ready to endure a heat wave. If only they observed human events around them as carefully as they watched the weather, they would understand Jesus' message. The time for action is here. To prepare for action, they must be ready. They're not to be distracted by things like lengthy disputes. He uses the example of someone being sued, telling them that if someone sues them, they ought to do their best to settle the matter outside of court in case they're held accountable, thrown into jail, and put themselves in a position when they can be no good to anyone. The call to follow Jesus means we are to discern God's will and keep ourselves ready to follow the path we know is right. Sometimes we can be distracted we can relate to the example Jesus uses of being sued. Many people in that situation long to go to court in order to be justified. They want to be vindicated. That can lead to lengthy, time-consuming, and expensive conflict. People with a lot of important things to do, on the other hand, often want to know what they have to do to make this matter go away. They're willing to pay damages, never be vindicated, all so they can get on with their lives. They don't want to waste their time fighting over small matters. They keep their attention on the goals that matter the most to them.
God is love. And that love is for all people, whatever their race or religion. The parables, such as the one we call the Good Samaritan, teach us that there is no other. There is no us and them. We're all God's children. And every one of us, no matter what each person's racial background gender diversity, or faith deserves justice, mercy, and respect. However, our economies are built on injustice, with more powerful and wealthier people exploiting the poor and the downtrodden. Therefore, the commandment to love my neighbor is radical. When we stand up for what we know to be right, not everyone likes it. Conflict results when we follow Jesus and take a stand or act in ways in which our families, friends, or community don't like. Jesus tells us following God is more important than that conflict. We have to expect that not everyone will agree with us. Nevertheless, we are shocked when we see evidence of how important it still is to discern what is right and take a stand to defend it. I was in horrified shock when police released video this week of a well-known Punjabi man being attacked with axes and machetes. It's one of the most horrifying events I've ever seen. The victim wore a colorful turban and has brown skin. The attackers wore masks but appeared to be white. On its face, it appears to be a hate crime based on the victim's race and religion. We take a stand against such hatred and violence. Even though we are aware that some people think such attacks help keep our country Christian, nothing about violent attacks such as that upholds Christianity. Instead, we proclaim that the Punjabi man and all those of other races and religions are beloved by God. They are our neighbors and worthy of our respect and full protection of their human rights. The biggest threat to the rule of Christ is not having others in the world who follow different religions. Rather, the threat to the rule of Christ comes from those who would pick up weapons and attack another in the name of faith. Christ tells us to love our neighbor. His command does not bring peace. It's a radical way to live, which does bring conflict. However, in this conflict, we're not to be the ones doing the knife attacks. We are called to live by God's word, striving to live in love in our communities and in our world. It is sometimes difficult to understand that the person standing in front of me is not an other, but a human being like myself. Christ challenges us to treat each other with justice, love, and kindness. It's even more difficult when the person we perceive as other is in the furthest province or across the world. Nevertheless, we are to persist in paying attention to what is happening and in discerning and doing what is right. When laws were passed decades ago mandating integrated education and equal human rights in the USA, 
Some people disagreed with them. There were those who lined the streets to throw stones at Ruby Bridges. The little girl who attended an all-white school on November 14, 1960 and broke the race barrier there. There were others who burned crosses and lynched people of color. Often those who wanted integration were in families who were opposed to it. Back then, many people discerned what was right and joined freedom marches and protested for equal laws and equality for all. They took action to do what was right. We would do well to follow their example because though we thought this was a settled matter, it is not. We still must do what is right and speak out in favor of human rights at every turn. That's discerning what is right. That's following the rule of Christ. The point is, we're to stand up for what is right and do what is right. We follow Jesus' commands even when it's the unpopular choice. We are capable of bringing good out of trouble when we remember to love one another. When we focus on our own grievances instead of on the person in front of us, we lose our way. Instead, we're to focus on what is right and put our energy into doing the things we can see need to be done. Feed the hungry. Fight for justice for all. Love one another, for love is from God. Be kind, be tender-hearted, be just. We watch the clouds for rain, and we're also to pay attention to where God leads us. Love your neighbor. We're all children of God together. And let that love guide you as you live your life. Amen. We're going to sing hymn number 498. It's just three verses, so we'll sing them all. Sing them over again to me.
Well, once again, thank you all for being here in church, especially on those Sunday mornings when the subway is closed all over the city. I'm really appreciative of people making the effort to get here. And uh, thank you for those of us uh, who are joining online and who will watch us later. It is wonderful to be able to worship together. And again, our thanks are extended to Sharon Beckstead, who will be playing the organ with us for the next couple of weeks as well, while Grace uh, continues uh, her holiday time. Um, we don't uh, pass the offering plate at the moment because of COVID restrictions. So if you have offering that you wish to leave up on the communion table, we'll collect it later. And in the next prayer, we'll give thanks for our blessings and uh, pray for our offerings. Not too much exciting in the middle of summer to announce, but I'm pleased to tell you that a couple of our members who have been in hospital are doing very well and seem to be uh, uh, recovering and, and uh, it's, it's a good thing. And we're, um, told that our prayers and our cards and thoughts are very much appreciated both by Jane uh, McElwain and also by uh, Bruce Thomas. And thank you all those who have sent uh, them messages of uh, hope and love. So greatly appreciated. Uh, speaking of our offering, we're really pleased that so many of you are continue to support the church and our work in various uh, places around the world and in our community. Uh, if you want part of your offering to go to a specific place, please indicate that on your um, offering or in an email to our treasurer. <laughs> Uh, we can donate separately to Presbyterian World Service and Development. There is a way to, uh, uh, by putting Ukrainian relief, to make sure some funds go to Ukrainian relief and Presbyterian sharing, which supports our joint uh, mission and ministry work through the Presbyterian Church in Canada working together is also appreciated. You can speak to our treasurer if you want to organize a pre-authorized remittance or e-transfer of funds. I think those are all of the announcements at the moment. Let us continue our service of worship and prayer. Let us pray. God of wisdom and love and giver of all good things, we thank you for your loving kindness and for your constant care over all creation. We thank you that we have enough abundance that we are able to share our ministry with you. And we pray that our gifts here to this church will be used according to your will and purpose and will help your light and love to shine forth into the world from this place and from everywhere. We bless you for the gift of life, for your guiding hand that is with us, for your sustaining love that supports us. And we thank you, Lord, for your friendship and for our ability to live in community to learn to see your face and friendship and love reflected in those we meet. We thank you for our ability to have hope when things are not always going well. And we thank you for precious memories of times that we enjoyed and that we miss. We thank you for the joys that cheer us and we even give you thanks, O Lord, for the trials that teach us to trust in you. We pray that the living presence of your Holy Spirit would fill us, would fill your church, would help to work through us our ministry 
so that we might serve you each day. We thank you that even when we feel weak, you are our strength. In our darkness, your light shines. In our sorrows, you bring us comfort and peace. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we would always know your presence. We pray not only for ourselves, but for those around us. For those who are in need, we ask that the wealth and abundance of the world would be more equitably shared among all people. We pray that we would learn to live in such a way that would protect the treasures of this earth and that we would heal the divisions among us as people and the harm that has been done in this world. Bless this world with peace, we pray. Kindle in the hearts of all people your love. Guide us with your wisdom so that we may be part of bringing your kingdom to fruition here in the world. That the earth might be filled with the knowledge of your love. And that all who are in trouble or pain would feel your comfort and help. We ask that you would heal those who are sick, support those who are dying, and console those who are mourning. Be near to those that we hold in our hearts in prayer. Bless our homes. Help us to feel your love and joy wherever we go and help us to know your mercy and love this day and every day. Help us to pray to you for all of our needs, to remember to be thankful for you, to ask you whenever we are confused for your guidance and insight. And we gather all our prayers and pray together as we have been taught saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 470, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. And we'll, 740, <laughs> sorry, mix those up. And we'll just sing the whole thing the way it is.
You are the mustard seed planted by God in the world, knowing that you will grow into a wonderful ministry that shelters and inspires and brings hope to many. Know that God is with you everywhere you go. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless and guide each one of you now and forevermore. Thank you.